Good afternoon, dear viewers from North America, from the United States and Canada. We're thrilled to have you with us this afternoon for you. It's uh, already evening here back in the Netherlands. My name is Erik Bakermans and I'm uh, Director of Marketing, Media and Conventions at the Netherlands Board of Tourism and Conventions. Next to me is Edo Anso from Royal Delft. Edo. Um, well, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Somebody uh, was still talking, but that's okay. Uh, thank you very much. I'm very uh, warm. Welcome to everyone uh, here at Royal Delft. Royal Delft is the original factory and museum where we make the iconic Delft blue uh, ceramics. And it's the stylish home for both the traditional Delft blue and the modern pieces. And uh -huh. In between us, we have a perfect example of that. Yeah, who is this? Um, well, let me introduce you to uh, our Mary Stewart, called Proud Mary. And this is a statue that we made a couple of years ago, and it shows like uh, the way we work here at Royal Delft. We try to uh, make also more modern pieces, but use, of course, the traditional Delft blue images like we see here in the dress. Uh, so Mary Stewart is just one of the items that we make here of, uh, at Royal Delft, amongst, of course, the more traditional pieces. I see. Uh, so today, um, my name is Ede Onso, and I will, I'm responsible for sales and marketing at Royal Delft. Uh, but today I will be showing you the workshop, because I've picked up uh, some of the painting skills along the way uh, from the painters. So mm -hmm. uh, today I will show, be showing the viewers uh, how to paint your own tile. Okay, great. So before we continue, let's do a quick video on the museum here at Royal Delft. So Edo, here we are at the entrance of Royal Delft. It's beautiful. Can you tell, tell us something about it? Of course. So with a company as old as this, we have to start with a little piece of history. Around 400 years ago, clever Dutch tradesmen started a company called the VOC. Uh, in Amsterdam and they started trading all over the world and they first found blue and white ceramics in China. So uh, they brought that to Amsterdam and they discovered that people were willing to pay millions for those beautiful blue and white ceramics. Uh -huh. uh, it was something they had never seen before. The color blue was so unique in that time in the, in the Dutch golden age as we call mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So they brought it over and they discovered that it was really a good business opportunity, these porcelain. So they started producing it uh, by themselves and that was here in Delft. Um, so uh, around 1650 there were 32 different factories in the city center of Delft producing Delft Blue because it became so popular worldwide. Uh, nowadays, Royal Delft is the last remaining factory from the 17th century, still producing the hand-painted pieces. I see. And why particular in Delft? Um, well, that's a funny reason actually, because at that time there were many uh, beer factories in Delft and um, the beer factories started to move to The Hague because The Hague was an upcoming city, growing in size, so the beer companies saw more opportunities there and there were many empty buildings here in Delft. Right. Uh -huh. uh, so that was the first reason and the second reason it was the port in Delft. Ah, um, so the port in Delft was very easy, easily accessible through uh, Rotterdam. Rotterdam didn't even exist in that time, so it was all here located in Delft. I see. Um, so that's how it started. I'm really excited to be here. Shall we explore the rest of the museum? Of course. Okay, let's go. Let's go. I follow you. You know the way. Yes. This is uh, the big entrance hall of our museum. Right. Um, it's of course very unique that Royal Delft, as the only factory, managed to survive for almost 400 years. And the way they did this is by uh, innovating. So they didn't just stick to the blue and white, but they, along the years they made different types of ceramics. And in this hall we see some examples of uh, building ceramics. Uh, now for instance the staircase behind me. Um, that's a beautiful example of building ceramics. And these building ceramics were mainly produced in Delft between 1910 and 1930, so already a, a long time ago. Um, and in 1980, we completely stopped the production of building ceramics because we discovered that they uh, contained lead. 
Ah. And that can be toxic for the workers, so yeah. uh, we stopped producing them. But they have been used in many important buildings in the Netherlands, like uh, many castles, but also the Burst van Berla, the trades company in Amsterdam, of course, uh, the post office in Rotterdam. And they were even used in Indonesia, which used to be a Dutch colony, um, on the restoration works on the Borobudur, which is the biggest Buddhistic temple in the world. So Royal Delft was even involved in those kinds of uh, projects at the time. Wow. Yeah. What else do you have in uh, what have you waiting for us? To well, show? the most important part, of course, yeah. is our handcraft, which we which is a tradition that we still uphold. So uh, let's go and meet the master painter. Oh wow. Hopefully we have to keep our distance. Uh, here, but um, here we have, I believe, Leo has been introduced uh, to you by us. Yes. What can you tell us? Well, Leo is one of the master painters here, and I have to say we only have four master painters working for us uh, at the moment, uh, among 15 painters, because the training to become a master painter takes about 10 years. So the first year is the basic training. Uh, it all happens here at Royal Delft, where they are trained by the older, train uh, older painters. Um, so first year they learn how to do simple decorations like flowers and then after four to five years they will master all the different decoration techniques um, like landscapes uh, and in the end after 10 years they will be able to even make a portrait uh, in Delft Blue. So these are very skilled uh, craftsmen um, and interestingly you can see that the painter is using a black paint. Yeah indeed. And we're trying to make Delft blue, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the black paint contains cobalt oxide, and the cobalt oxide will go into a chemical reaction when fired, mm -hmm. and that will turn the black paint into blue due to that chemical reaction, and so we call it cobalt blue. So once it goes into the oven or yes. into the, the furnace or whatever you call it, yeah, um, then the color changes to blue. Exactly. I see. Yeah. So all is painted in black. Now. Of course, you can imagine that not all the Delft blue souvenirs in Amsterdam and all around the Netherlands were painted by our 15 painters. You wish. But with porcelain, you always have to look at the bottom. So if ah. people, if the viewers have a piece at home, uh, you have to lift it up, take a look at the back or at the bottom and see if there's a trademark there. Right. Now, our trademark that we have been using since 1989, you can see over here on this tile tableau, now this contains the initials JT for the old owner, Jo Stoft. Then on the left side will be the initials of the painter, which for Leo will be LDG, so you know that he made it. Mm -hmm. And on this side will be a year code. Um, and then, then below that you can see the word Delft. I see. So only if it has that on the bottom, you know that is an original hand-painted piece by, uh, by Royal Delft. The sign of origin. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Um, so let's take a quick look in the museum. I don't have time to show you everything, but if you want and everything is possible again, please uh, feel free to visit us. But for now, let's move into the museum. Yeah, let's go. Can you explain what we see here in this uh, in this showcase? Of course. Well, uh, let's start on the left over here. You can see the dinnerware uh, that we made for the Dutch royal family. Uh, this was made in 2017 as a special design for the royal family. So it's not available for normal people like you and me. Too bad. <laughs> it was especially custom made for uh, Willem Alexander and uh, Queen Ma uh, Queen Maxima. Uh, they even put their own initials in the middle, W and M. So yeah, th those are like special uh, things that we make. And I get the question a lot, like why is it called royal? Uh, is, does it have something like some meaning to it? Well, in Holland, if the company is older than a hundred years and of significant value to the Dutch heritage, you get a royal certificate. So that means you are appreciated, I guess, by the royal family, which we uh, are very happy with. Um, and they often still visit Royal Delft, uh, come here to, uh, take a beautiful piece like the Tulip Pyramid over here uh, when they go on their travels to other countries. So, yeah. Interesting. Shall we continue? Yes. Now 
Now this is where later today we're going to do the live session. Uh, as a last shot, I would like to show you the Night Watch, which is on this side. Um, the Night Watch is an actual size replica uh, of the actual painting by Rembrandt van Rijn, made out of 418 tiles in total uh, by two of our master painters. And a piece like that would take about 14 months to complete. So it's unbelievable what you see. If you see this in real, it's uh, it's actually the same size as the original painting. Is, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. Now I guess just a few a small insights for our North American, our uh, United States and Canadian watch uh, viewers actually, I should put it like this. There's one small secret on this painting, in this case the Delft Blue version, and that's actually here we have the master himself, Rembrandt where he painted himself on this beautiful piece of art. So Edo, is there anything else which you would like to share with us at this moment? No, I think we can move back to the, to the live stream. So yeah? Thank you very much. Well, yeah. thank you for having us. All thank right. you. Hello everyone, welcome. I am Antonia Kudijk, one of your contacts at the Netherlands Board of Tourism and Conventions in New York. And I'm greeting you today from upstate New York. Of course, we would have loved to meet in person somewhere in Washington DC, New York, or even Miami. However, the situation is not as such. I hope you and your loved ones are well. And we are excited to offer you a new type of masterclass workshop today to temporarily disconnect from the daily grind while we are still in contact with each other and trying to connect. And we do that in a virtual way. However, my colleague Eric will be live at Royal Delft and so is Edo Anso and one of my colleagues, Pinar Oskan. And we are doing our best to bring you some relaxation, some fun, and um, we will together disconnect from the daily grind because there is a lot happening these days. And of course, we look forward to seeing each other soon again and having that face-to-face -face contact and run our meetings and conventions as we all love to do. For now, I wish you an enjoyable time. Please disconnect with us. And Erik and Edo, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Antonia, from uh, your home office uh, in Cold Spring. Um, so we're back here at the studio at the museum here at Royal Delft, and Edo will explain soon what is about to happen. But before we start, I would like to introduce our Dutch partners. And I'd like to kick off with Catherine Calamidas from Rotterdam. Calami uh, Catherine, you can, can you tune in, please? Where are you? Ah. Hi everybody, nice to see you all. Uh, Monique, André Laporte from Utrecht. Hello everybody, can you see me? Well, yes. it is great to e-meet you. It's a very different thing to the real live version and I really, really hope we can go back to live. Thank you Monique. And over to Mark Struik from Postillon Hotels. Mark. Hello, everybody. Nice to meet you uh, from, from a cold and rainy Netherlands today. Thank you, Mark. Over to Matthijs Stakema from Rai Amsterdam. Yes, hello, everyone. Nice to see, uh, see you all here today. And I'm looking forward to an uh, inspiring workshop. So, uh, yeah, excited. Thank you. Uh, Bart Antonissen from Amsterdam Convention Bureau. Yes, hello everybody. Can you hear me? <laughs> Straight from, uh, from my uh, little Amsterdam house. <laughs> Looking forward to, uh, well, to paint today, actually. <laughs> okay, thank you, uh, Bart. Over to Danielle Koelen from Beers van Berlage, Amsterdam. Hi, nice to meet you all. I, yeah, I'm working from two uh, systems, so I hope you can hear me. Um, well, 
it's lovely to see you all and I'm just already inspiring by using my paint. Look forward to meet you uh, and speak to you later on. Bye bye. Thank you, Daniela. And last but not least, Tadea Pivic from the Hague Convention Bureau. Hi, everyone. Nice meeting you. Super excited to be here today. Thank you all for organizing. Antonia, Eric, Pinar, really great having you having this workshop. And uh, yeah, cannot wait to start painting. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Tadea, for your introduction. Um, yeah, we were supposed to be here in Delft with our Dutch partners, but due to the situation, we decided it was wiser to have our partners work from home. Uh, so the only one here is the crew, Edo, and of course, Pinar uh, Oskan, who was supposed to be in New York as well. Uh, but again, due to the situation, she's now with us and overseeing this whole production. Thank you, Pinar, for all your work in advance. Thank you. Now, uh, before we start, let's quickly introduce uh, the rules of the game. Um, we have introduced ourselves. Please keep logged in, uh, logged in into Zoom uh, and keep the camera on at all times. If you need help with your painting, just raise your hand in Zoom so we can help you if you have any questions. Also, uh, questions you may ask, use the Zoom chat function. Um, everyone is unmuted until you raise your hand. Otherwise, it's going to be a big chaos, and that's not what we want. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be fun. Uh, but still, we would like to hear what everybody is saying. And while the program is continuing, of course, we will have little chats and, uh, with, with each other just to keep the engagement and, and the talks going on. Okay. And last but not least, please, if you are going to post uh, any content on social media, please use the hashtag, hashtag like Netherlands, uh, hashtag Royal Delft. Well, I guess that's it for now. Um, shall great. we start with the instruction? Edo? Yes, I think they're ready. Yeah? Okay, There's well, a, has been such a great build up, but <laughs> let's take a seat and let's go okay. uh, do the actual painting. Um, so I hope everybody at home has their uh, packages uh, unwrapped like I have right here. Um, this is the package we sent you. Uh, just so you know, all of you have different images. So some of you got the kissing couple, some of you got a windmill, some of you got boats, but that's all right. I will give you all an explanation. And if you have questions, just let me know. Um, also, what was not in the box is a bowl of water or a glass of clear water. So if you haven't got that yet, please get it because you'll need it for the painting. Um, now let's go over the things that we sent you. First of all, of course, the tile that we are going to make. And this already has the outlines of the design on the tile. So this is uh, just a little tool to help you. Um, now, aside from that tile, there's also a glaze tile in the box. The glaze tile is like your palette. So we're gonna use that to put the paint on and to mix it, to make different shades. Um, and then we have a shard, because I'm guessing for most of you, this is the first time you're painting Delft Blue. So we gave you a little practice piece right here. Like I said, you need to get a bit of water, a bowl of water or a glass, and then there's the paint. Now we had a little issue with the paint because the paint we sent you was uh, vanished. So this was uh, very stressful for Antonia and me on Friday. <laughs> but Antonia has fixed the problem and has sent you new paint. So hopefully this will work just as well as our paint here in Delft. Now, over to the brushes. We have two types of brushes. The first brush has a pointy end and the second one uh, doesn't have a pointy end. Let's put that one aside and take the pencil with the pointy end. And what we're gonna do here is put a bit of paint on the glaze tile. So just take a bit of paint and put that on the corner of the tile. Now, let's put the actual tile that we're going to make aside for now and focus on the practice piece. So please take the shard and add some water to the dried paint that is on your palette. Now what you want to do here is make a puddle of blue next to the dried paint. So you don't need all the dried paint that you put there yet. Just make a puddle of dark blue. Keep adding water a couple of times, keep adding a bit more paint and make sure that it flows. It, it, I get a, a strange Bob Ross feeling. <laughs> <laughs> well. 
I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> no, 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 but, it uh, makes me feel so yeah. relaxed. Yeah, all right, all right. Yeah, 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 we're yeah, already yeah. disconnecting, yeah, right? Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> all right, everyone, now, hopefully your whole brush is blue, and we're gonna star start with the shard. This brush is for the lines, so just the tip of the pencil of the brush will touch the shard and make a line. Now, they also call this brush the puller, so we always pull it from the top to the bottom. So just try that on the shard. And we only pull it down, we don't push it, so that means if we want to make a circle, you would need two strokes, so one on the left side, and then we go again to the top, and then on the right side. So that's very different than using a pen, actually, because you cannot push it. If you, if you would push it, it would just flip over and you get something like that. So try that out a bit. Try maybe writing your name, doing some straight lines, doing some curved lines. Now, if your brush is empty, you want to fill it up with paint again. So you go through the puddle with the whole brush, not just the pointy end, but the whole brush, because the thick part of the brush is like a reservoir. So you want to fill that up with paint so you can use it a bit longer. Just try making those lines. Remember, like I said in the tour, it takes about 10 years to become a master painter, so don't beat yourself up if you don't get it right, right away. Now, if you feel confident enough, I think for some of you it might already be time to start with the actual tile. Now, I chose the kissing couple because it's, of course, a very uh, iconic Dutch scene. So, First of all, we're gonna do the lines. Later on in the workshop, I will explain to you how to fill up the line with the other brush, but just keep focusing on the, on the lines right now. And most of the designs have uh, those little corners, so maybe you wanna start with those so you can practice a little, and then move to the actual image in the middle. So you got good. It's actually quite fun that we see everybody here on screen and is working very intense on these little lines and figures. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's just see, do we, have, do we have the chat here? Maybe there are some questions. Yeah, concentration, I see. There's a I, lot of concentration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of disconnecting. Now, just a couple of tips. If you feel like you're, um, you run out of paint very soon, just add a bit more water so it flows more. And um, if you feel like there's, it's, it's a bit too liquid, just add some more of the dried paint and then you get a nice uh, flowing puddle of paint. So I think that's it for the first part of the, of the workshop. Mm -hmm. Like I said, later on I will explain to the viewers how to uh, color the lines, but uh, yeah. okay. I think they should be fine with, uh, with that first introduction, hopefully. Okay, so while we continue, we may have a few chats with our Dutch partners and um, our guests back in uh, North America, in uh, the US and Canada. Um, let me see who is looking up to the camera. Bart, <laughs> yes, you <laughs> responded. So, um, is, is, this, uh, is this your, your workspace from, uh, at your home office? Is, is this the place where you work or spend the day? Or do yes, you... unfortunately, this is all. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I spend my days in my tiny kitchen. Uh, and, um, well, basically, next, next to this, well, I can move the camera maybe a bit. Um, there's my uh, sitting area, and that's basically it. <laughs> so, okay, well, it does look yes. cozy. Or what kind they of work, a, do, well, uh, what is the word we use working, in the Netherlands? Um, uh, living space. Living space. And how would you deem uh, what the atmosphere is in, you, in, your, in your apartment? 
What, what kind of word do we use in Holland? To... Uh, cozy, gezellig. Yeah, but what's the Dutch word? Gezellig. Gezellig. Yes. Are you working, uh, how is it going? You're, yeah, now, you're now unmuted. Yeah, uh, it's going very well. So, uh, yeah, I'm trying to concentrate and uh, I'm not very talented, I must admit. <laughs> <laughs> How's the painting going today? Uh? <laughs> well, slowly, but I, it's not ready yet to be shown. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, well, no, but I'm not asking. So, no, today I know you have been, you're actually quite experienced in presenting webinars. Um, yeah. And how, how is that? Because it's all new to us. I mean, I'm not doing this on a daily basis either. So I was just wondering how you have experienced presenting webinars. I believe you have done over five or six even. Am I right? Yeah. For The Hague? Yeah. Yeah, we did, ha uh, we did six months of webinars so far. Yeah, indeed. Mm -hmm. And how uh, were they successful in, 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 and did you reach the goal so far? Yeah, we're super happy with what we have reached. So every month we had a different topic. So we always wanted to contribute also not only, you know, to COVID, but to share ideas and new points of views also on, on the general matters on sales marketing uh, that you can implement uh, in current situation and, you know, in, in, in general in life. Uh, so it was really successful. Uh, we have are, yeah, we have a lot of uh, audiences from all over the world. So we also um, invited speakers like uh, like uh, Karina Bauer from IMEX. Uh, we have Oscar Cerezales from MCI. So we really try to make sure that we cover all continents when inviting speakers, just to make sure that all the views are, um, you know, yeah, presented during the webinars. Mm. Thank you, Tadea. Um... Matthijs, how are yes, you? Yes, Eric. <laughs> how are you doing? We well, haven't I seen was just typing because uh -huh. uh, it looks like the pattern on my tile is not very visible. Oh, <laughs> oh, gee, yeah. So um, I got a couple of lines, but here, here's the other tile. Look, <laughs> very. I don't know. If, uh, does everyone has it like this? Or? <laughs> Hopefully not. Well, it's just a bit of charcoal we use on the outlines to uh, to give you an image. So uh, yeah, you can use like the example that we sent you, like this one as well. Um, okay. What you could do is get a pencil and make a bit of uh, some sketches on your tile. So uh, you, you can still make some mistakes. I will do a, a freestyle uh, sketch. A freestyle yeah. a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, even better. <laughs> so, but no, actually, so the situation, of course, at the convention center in Amsterdam at the Rai, I mean, obviously, we're not happy at all. No. Um, and, um, yeah, how, how are you coping with the situation? Yeah, well, it's, it's still very difficult. Um, we just uh, had a, a round of, uh, of delays of people. We, we, yeah, we needed to let go quite a lot of people, like um, 150 people. Uh, that was quite hard for the whole organization, of course. Um, so, and now we're yeah, hoping that, 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 that the second lockdown will be over as soon as possible so we can start up again. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's yeah, for, for the whole industry, it's a disaster. And in all our space, we've got more, more than 12 halls and they're all empty at the moment. The only thing we're doing is uh, testing on, on COVID. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the irony at the moment. Yeah, who would, have, who would have thought that, right? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, um, I'm um, quite anxious to find out how your painting will look like in, uh, at the end of the program. Thank you, Matthijs. Yeah, and too. before we continue to our other partners, um, is anyone of our North American guests? Uh, where are we? Because everybody has disappeared on screen, on my screen at least here. Kimberly, how are you doing? Everything is good. I actually got my, I think I've got my tile pretty well done. Wow. I'm Kimberly Core. I'm with the Optical Society. Uh -huh. Nice to meet ah, you all. Um, yeah, I, I think it's coming through the way it should be coming through. So, well, so it does. So, Amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Once Great I got job. the hang of it, it, uh, it, uh, it was, it's coming together. I wouldn't consider myself a great artist, but it's coming along. Okay. And um, I'm here, I'm in Washington DC area. We have a beautiful, it's a beautiful fall day today. I'm sitting outside right now. 
mm-hmm. and um, and enjoying the outside while I can. Well, your your I I mean your background is not artificial. This is your no. That's my that's <laughs> those are the woods. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but we is... have uh, let me see. We have deer, foxes, raccoons, squirrels. Um, skunks. Yeah, but it, it's 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 a real background. It's not like what you get. Yeah, on no, this is and, that's you know, real. <laughs> exactly. No, no, no. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. This is an actual plant back here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. May I have the uh, total screen back on? Thank you. Now it took me a while, but I think I'm finished here. So Are I'm you? gonna I'm gonna almost uh, move on to the second part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me just uh, I'm, I'm making a mess, you know. It's, but uh, let me let me show you guys what I did at least, and and of course if you finished with the lines, we would love to see your results of, as well, and. Um, I think we can move on to, to the second part because this may take us a while as well mm-hmm. um, of coloring the, uh, the image that we just made. Now, the other brush that I was talking about is the, is the one without a pointy end and we want to keep that clean. So hopefully you've kept it clean. If not, just wash it off in the water uh, so it's completely clean. Now, we're going to use just clear water this time and make a puddle of clear water at the bottom corner of your plate. So just clear water this time, because we're gonna make a really light shade of blue. Now see, I'm dipping it in the water, like five times maybe, and then we're gonna add a tiny bit of the other paint, of the other puddle, to that puddle of water to make it really light. So it's a a very simple, basic rule here. The more water you add, the lighter the color will get, and the more paint you add, the darker it will get. But we're gonna start off with the light shades because it's always possible to make that darker, but not the other way around. So if you want to, you can uh, pick up your shard again to to do some practicing. And uh, like the practice lines that we just made, just try filling those up with this, uh, this brush. This brush is also called the filler. And this brush is a bit thicker, of course. Now, if you would want to make a really thick line, just push it a bit harder on the shard, like that. And if you want to make a thin line, you just push it really lightly on the shard. So that's how it goes. It's also pulling it down like the other brush. And sometimes you will see that at the end of your stroke, there will be a little water drop. That's that's actually okay. That's how you can tell that it's hand painted. So don't worry about those little water drops at the end. So like I said, we're first going to do the very very light shades and look at your example to to see which uh, shades should be light. But you can, of course, make your own variations. Um, and really feel free to paint. So don't uh, yeah, worry about it going outside of the lines or anything. Just, uh, just go ahead and paint. It's your own little artwork, so it doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> it's hand-painted, you know? So just like that. And if you finished all the light shades, just, uh, just add a bit more paint and then, uh, and then go for a bit darker. I think with this type of paint, you can make like five or six different shades of blue. So uh, try to keep it, give it a bit of depth with those, uh, those different shades. Now, if you want to color something like really small, like for my image, of course, um, I have the belts, which are really, really small. But for instance, the girl with the pearl earring, you have the, the lips. Um, you can use the other brush again with the pointy end to, to color as well, because it's... Uh, such a tiny space. So just that's just a little tip. Now, of course, if you have questions about that, uh, feel free to ask them in the in the chat. Uh, the crew over here will let me know. Monique, how is your trial coming on? Monique from Utrecht. Can we have sound, please, on Monique? Mute. Yeah, there you are. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going. Oops, I'm going for the free invitation. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. Oh wow! I, yeah. I sort of missed the lines, so um, 
I think it's going to be something entirely different. Okay, okay. And Daniela, how are you coming on with your piece of art? Well, let's see. Aha. I think I think I'm okay. <laughs> yes, you are. My brush, my brush is a bit thick, so I'm uh, I'm like uh, uh, <laughs> putting some scissors up and made the pointy uh, um, brush uh, more pointy than it should be. So um, <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. yeah, I think I'm I'm confident. That's, I'm that's not, actually I'm what the it. painters do as well. So uh, don't, don't worry about that. You mm -hmm. can cut it. You can do whatever you want. Uh, yeah. yeah, as long as it's more convenient. So Daniela, <laughs> did you guys at the uh, Beers van Ber Berlage did ha have any events after March? Yes, we did. You did. <laughs> and um, how but not uh, all small parts. Uh, a lot of uh, Amsterdam community that came in uh, towards uh, the uh, uh, towards having small, um, yeah, board meetings, um, some community meetings. But I think the best part that we did is we had a huge event uh, at the end of September. Um, with the social distancing consideration, and uh, we had 240 people uh, in house, um, all having catering, uh, all uh, did their plenary session. They worked out for uh, several hotels. Originally, it was a meeting of 750 people um, and ended up with, well, 240. And it was a bit of odd because that was the press conference of the prime minister on that Tuesday. Um, giving us more strict rules. Uh, so that was quite exciting and strange, actually. It gave us like a, well, strange balance in, in um, what was going on in the world and actually a live event in-house. Okay, thank you, Daniela. Can I have the, uh, the, the large, uh, all the images online? On screen, please. Oscar. How is your work coming on? I couldn't see the lines either, but um, <laughs> I'm not sure what's, uh, what's coming out of this. Uh, well, it is open, great. it's a vessel, <laughs> it's a ship, is it? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a yeah. ghost ship, I just call it the ghost ship. It's the Flying Dutchman. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> But I must, I must say, I'm, uh, I'm actually enjoying this. This is the first time that I'm actually uh, relaxing, doing something that is not focusing on, you know, what's on my screen. Exactly. Um, <laughs> I must say, you know, the only thing I should have done is actually uh, uh, put a glass of wine on my desk. I, I failed to do that. But, you know, maybe on a second time, I might do that. Okay, well, this is not going to be the last time we're doing this, and I know one of the Dutch partners has a glass of white wine in her vicinity, so, but out, out of the frame, I believe. Um, Annette, how are you doing? Oh, Simone has a question. Oh. Is it me, Annette, or Simone? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, well, I guess I'll show you really quickly for Annette. Um, so I'm with the Financial Women's Association, but I work for Royal Bank of Canada, which I heard the Canadian shout out. So uh -huh. um, this is what I've done so far. And Simone's our president. Our goal is to have, was to have our trip, you know, over, you know, in your wonderful country. So I'm sure Simone might have some more things to say there. And I, I want to make sure we do make this happen when it's safe and, and possible. But happy to be here. And I'll pass on to Simone. Fantastic. And thank you for being with us. Goedemiddag. This is my, uh, like, I've never, I've been to Delft so many times, I've never painted a child. This is so cool. Um, <laughs> so my question is, for my second child, and then I'll tell you a little bit about our conference, I do have it printed on here, but if I wanted to do my own design, can I erase the, the guide marks on um, there or paint over them or... When yeah, yeah, it's a good question. Um, sometimes even the back of the tile is, is good enough to paint on. If not, you can do it on the front. Uh, we can, uh, you can erase that with a plumeau, so like uh, feathers, I guess, and just uh, wipe it off like that. It's just, okay. uh, and, and then you can, uh, like I said before, maybe it's good to make a bit of a, of a sketch. It's not that easy to erase the pencil, but uh, of course you, you may want to like put the outlines on there or something like that and then paint over it with, uh, with the blue paint. So that, that yes. would probably be the best way. 
Thank you. And as Annette said, um, I'm the president. She's the chair of our international conference. And we do this every year. We were hoping to come in April. It's looking a little less likely for April, but maybe later in, in the spring. Um, I lived there for six years and it's gonna be coming home for me. So I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, that we, that we can do something. It's really nice to have all the Dutch partners on the, on the call as well. We'll probably be reaching out to some of you. It's not a big group. It's only about 40 women that come over, but um, I'm at Morgan Stanley. We're all in the financial services area. So be nice to be back. Thank you. And maybe in the meantime, uh, we can tell something about the raffle that we're going to do later uh -huh. on. Yeah, 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 um, we should. I was asked by the Netherlands Board of Tourism to, uh, to have a little present or a, a prize, actually. Uh, and it's on that side of the table with you. Um, and this is a really unique uh, item that I picked for you. Uh, of course, with a warm heart of Royal Delft in these difficult times for all of you in this, in this sector. Um, it's a Christmas ball, fully hand-painted uh, by one of our master painters, and it's a special design for 2020. And these Christmas balls are always limited editions. Uh, so they're not made infinitely. And this year we have a very nice design, I think, uh, with, of course, on the front, the 2020, and on the back, it's a beautiful landscape with snow and a church. So a very Delft scene, actually. Um, so you can, uh, you can win this, and at the end of the workshop, when everybody is done, we will do the raffle and uh, pick the name that the Christmas ball is going to. We'll send it to your home, so you don't need to worry about uh, anything, actually. Yeah. Great. And the names are all in this uh, Delft Blue Bowl. So when we're ready... So who's going yeah. to do the honors? You? Um, well, yes, that's for of later. Course, yeah. <laughs> that's for later. No, not now yet. Not now? No, no, no. Okay, okay, first okay. we have to uh, <laughs> yeah. finish uh, yeah. the uh, unbelievable piece of art. Exactly. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say as well about the art, if you wanted to... This is, of course, just the outlines that we put on there. So feel free to uh, make something of your own, like the design that I made. Um, you can you can make a landscape on the back or, or anything. I put a name next to it, uh, whatever you like. So, Catherine from Rotterdam. <laughs> uh, yes. What, what kind of picture do you have on your tile? Oh, I have. I, well, I have the kissing boy and girl, of course. Ah, uh, uh, yes. A favorite. Yes, oh, that's good. it's also it's also my personal Dutch story because that's how I ended up <laughs> in Holland. Uh, I came here many, many, many years ago. I kissed a boy and I stayed. <laughs> <laughs> this is your story. <laughs> so, <laughs> is this your first master class? In in Delft Blue, yes, definitely. It's my uh, first, same for uh, me. First master class. Uh huh. How do you like it so far? I mean, obviously you wanted to be there in person, but yeah. you know. I like it a lot. I think as, a, as an expat, uh, I've spent a lot of time there in the museum in the early years that I was here because every time someone came to visit me, this was required. We had to visit the factory in Delft because that's what everybody wanted. And everybody wanted to buy Christmas ornaments. So lucky you that you guys are going to possibly win one. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. And then to the man with the golden gate bridge in his, back, in his background, Mark. Where are you? Um, I'm basically at home. And yeah, I know where you my, are. <laughs> my, my, my background is not actually, uh, that inspiring, so I thought this, this, this was a good solution. Um, well, I finished my freestyle. I'm not sure if you can see it. A little bit higher. Higher. Uh, do you see it or not? No, uh, well, it's, ah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The girl, <laughs> it's, it's an abstract form of the girl with the pearl earring, I would Definitely. say. <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah. I just sent a picture to my team and they all laugh, laugh about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how would you translate the word, the word tegeltjeswijsheid in English? <laughs> uh, tell wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> the typical Dutch. It's uh, it's yeah. it's uh, words which have a, a sort of meaning, and then you. It's typically Dutch, and there is like uh, sayings in in Dutch which have a specific meaning, like um, 
Now, now I can't get, now I can't think well, of an example. Well, but there are little rhymes that are put on tiles, right? Yeah, exactly. And it's uh, like with, yeah. the, with the typical Delft blue corners. And actually, it's funny that the Dutch people know Delft blue uh, uh, mainly for those tile wisdoms, as you say. Exactly. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's very, uh, it's a thing here. I think we're moving on to Simona, who raised the hand. Uh huh. Let's see if she has some uh, painting question. Oh, you guys answered my question about what to do with the other tiles. Ah, okay, good. Okay. Oh, that was done. All right. Yeah. Done. Graag gedaan. So, Kristen, where are you? I am in raining Miami. It's oh. actually a, a, a rare day here. Actually, I shouldn't say rare. It rains a lot, a lot more than I expected mm -hmm. when I moved down here about two years ago. Um, oh. But it's usually passing showers, so it still can't complain. It's a constant at least 80 degrees. I don't know how that translates into Celsius. Yeah, um, well, yeah. agreeable, I would it's, say. Uh, <laughs> Probably but, warmer but than I've here. Actually, <laughs> I've actually been to the museum and the factory when I was in Amsterdam for an event several years ago, I took the train to Delft wow. and spent a lovely day there. Oh, that's um, great and there hear. was a market out in Delft too that I went to, if I recall correctly. There um, is. And I may have brought home a few pieces that <laughs> if my kitchen was a little cleaner, I'd turn my camera, um, <laughs> but I have like a whole shelf of Delft. So oh. this was very exciting for me because I love the blue and white. even. And, the and, and what, what did you buy, Kristen? A uh, couple tiles um, and a few Christmas ornaments. Great, and great. And what else uh, do I have up there? Uh, a tea set. Well, I, I'm happy to see we have an ambassador here. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, whenever so you're, is, you're back this again. This is my yeah. unfinished work. Ah, uh, looks beautiful. good. Looks good. Unfinished yeah. yet, but. Yeah. Why, why unfinished? It's it looks, going the right way. Yeah. Well, I'm not done yet. Okay. Ah, no, no, we shouldn't, we shouldn't. It already looks great. <laughs> and then we Thank have you. Michelle. Michelle, where are you? No, no, no connection. Michelle. No. And Natalie? I see uh, Natalie. Hello, I'm in Virginia, uh -huh. just up Washington as well. Ah, there Welcome. you are. I was there in 2019, so we actually got to enjoy the Netherlands and The Hague and the tulips. Um, and I'm very much hoping that I win the Christmas ornament because I'm, I'm challenged with the paint. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but I know what it was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, I should know. Yeah. Hi, I'm also Natalie in DC. Oh, yes, there you wow. are. Oh, so, so in the yeah. artistic things are not my uh, forte, but it's fun. Thank no, you for still. having this event. It's very fun. No, no, no. It's, uh, I love it's, the Netherlands, it's, and I have also been to Delft. I went on. Great. We had a conference in Amsterdam at the Burs van Berlachen. I can try to pronounce Burs it. Burs van Berlachen. Yeah. 2015, and I did a day trip to Delft after the conference, and it was a lovely town. Yeah. And I mm. went to the museum. Wow, that's great to hear. So, so many fans in the chat. I'm done. Yeah? Yeah. You're ready? Yeah. But maybe I have a bit more experience than the, yeah, uh, than yeah, the people. Yeah, perhaps we should give our guests yeah. Uh, yeah. some more time. Matthijs has a question. Matthijs, please come in. Yeah, it's, it's not really a question. It's just something I want to show you uh -huh. because it has a nice story to it as well. And first, I'm going to show it. Oh, wow. Is this one? Else a wolk had a silver brand rande. I think what it means, but you may explain, of course. Yes. Okay, I will. <laughs> uh, because this actually belongs to my um, my grandmother. 
Um, well, now it belongs to me because she died earlier this year, and this is something I, I took from her house uh, because I, it, it has some uh, emotional value, so I, I thought it was really nice. And the text is actually um, in a different language from the Netherlands called Fries, and yep. that's the original region where I'm from. And it actually says uh, that el every cloud has a silver lining. Exactly. So, and in this case, I thought it was a nice, uh, something nice to show you all because, well, uh, we're in this situation now, but every cloud has a silver lining. So let's, yeah, again, hope this is all soon over and we can meet in, in real life again. So, uh, but this one, and that, that's also something <laughs> I wanted to ask you because you were talking about the science yeah. on, uh, on the thing. Yeah. But this one is from your competitor, I guess, huh? Well, it's probably an old plate. It's not an... Uh... I, I don't think it's a factory that is still open, actually. No, it's in Makkum. It's Makkum. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I couldn't tell that. But yeah, yeah, Makkum is, is also still producing some Delft Blue. Yeah. yeah, but not open to, to visitors anymore. But it's a beautiful plate. And I, I guess we have not only tile wisdoms, but also plate wisdoms in this. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful message. Well, thank you for sharing that yeah. personal story, uh, Matthijs. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Um, so we started um, that in, if I'm correct, because I, I, th I, I heard that I said it wrong in the video, actually, so I'm glad people are asking about <laughs> it. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> because we, we, we started in 1879, so that's a bit longer, a bit more time ago. Um, and that year we started with an A. And then in 1880, it was a B and a C and so on until we were out of letters. So we started using two. So it was AA, AB and so on. And now we have arrived at EO, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, so next year will be uh, EP. And, and that's how you can tell, yeah. But I guess we'll still have a lot of EO pieces left next year <laughs> because, uh, yeah, of course, unfortunately, due, due to Corona, we, we have a lot of less visitors than we usually uh, receive. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. do how many visitors do you have on a, on a daily on a normal daily basis? Uh, it's hard to say on a daily basis, but I would say a year uh, about 140,000 uh, people visiting wow. Royal Delft. Yeah. 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 And many of those are uh, from the United States and, and Canada as well. Uh, and that's because lots of Americans have Dutch heritage. Yeah. So I get to meet a lot of interesting people from the States that are, uh, yeah, that have stories to tell. Like, like, for instance, the plate that was just shown. There are many people that show me pieces like this. And this makes us very happy, of course, that our product gets to travel all over the world and, and uh, gets people to stay in touch with their heritage. So, yeah, it's a beautiful way. Uh, to connect to, to the Netherlands, I guess. Yeah. Okay. How are we doing on time? All right. Okay. So maybe the people that are uh, ready with their painting, they can put up their thumbs or something like that so we can see. Yeah, where can we, we show at? some hands who is uh, ready? Some of them are, are ready and, and some of them are not. Shall we a couple of more minutes? A couple more minutes, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah. Barbara, where are you working from? Can we have sound on Barbara, please? Yeah. There I am. Is Barbara? Hi. Ah, there you are. I, I am working from the corner of my kitchen in Brooklyn. Aha. Yeah. So, um, have you explored every part of your home by now? Are you, uh, <laughs> or are you moving you around know, in your home? Like I think uh, many people who live in cities, it's a, a small home. And I read a, a story that said, find a new area in your home, find a new way you can make a new space in your home. And I thought, you know, I do know every square inch. I um, have been spending much more time though sitting out on my stoop. So I'm very happy to have a lot of trees and mm. a lot of parks nearby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Now we must exercise that because all those meetings online, I notice it myself, you're sitting in a chair far too long and I, that's what I miss, even who would have thought that we miss the office. But now we do, you know, have a chat with, with, with your colleagues or wa walk around or even, in, but it's, it's great that you at least have the chance to uh, move around in your own, uh, in your own area, of course. Yes. Fantastic. Who haven't I yet talked to? Antonia. Uh, Tony, of course. Antonia, but we will go back to Antonia if we are right. coming to the conclusion. Antonia, where is your... I, uh, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Can I show uh, something? So, yeah, actually, would you care to share the story on the paint or um, uh, would you just show uh, your... I'm <laughs> not sure if that's the most interesting one. <laughs> I've, I've learned one thing. When you organize an event in the last moment, there can always go something wrong and the devil is in the details, as they say in the US. And yeah. it's for sure true. So I'm very happy that uh, with help of uh, some people, we managed to get the details in order so far. But um, I, I really liked what uh, Edo said about, uh, and, and you, Eric, about uh, tile wisdom. I have some plate wisdom too. I purchased this item at a flea market and I'm, I forgot what I paid for it, but it was probably no more than a few dollars. Oh, and I okay. thought it was amazing that yeah. Del Flu was combined with Miss Liberty, if you can see it. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure about the stamp on the bottom. It doesn't look very um, costly to me, but I just think it is amazing that uh, indeed uh, Del Flu plays such an important role in the US. That's what it was showing me. This plate was painted for the 100th anniversary of Miss Liberty uh, here in New York City. Um, so yeah, that connection between the countries, um, it goes a long way back and it keeps on uh, recurring. Um, and that's why I'm so happy that today we can bring our American and Canadian clients together with our Dutch partners. We keep on connecting. So thank you all for being here. That's uh, uh, what I want to say from the bottom of my heart. It's really uh, quite unique to do it this way. Thank you, Antonia. And I think we haven't yet been talking to Jessica. Am I right or? Yes, so hi, I'm Jessica Pagonis. I'm from the Optical Society. I work alongside with Kimberly Coer. You met her earlier. Uh -huh. um, so, so I think I was a little nervous about my paint. And so I didn't quite, I, I went for the turquoise look, so I don't know. <laughs> You guys. Oh, there you go. Ah, oh, wow. Just, yeah, fantastic. Um, I don't know if you can still see it, but yeah. Um, so yeah, that, it's, um, this is definitely fun. Like I, um, I, I didn't know what to expect. So this is, and I'm a terrible, I'm a terrible painter. So I was actually quite nervous. My circles, I don't know if anyone else had problems with circles. I, I definitely did. Yes. Yeah, that's the um, most difficult part. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've never been to Amsterdam, but. Um, I, I've been to Maastricht. I went on a site visit last year, um, but yes, no, it's on my it's on my uh, list, of course, to to get to, and I definitely will be visiting the uh, the museum to see this. So, this is great. This has been lovely. Yeah, let's Not hope that though. those times will return uh, anytime soon. Um, shall we have a look at all the paintings? Is everybody ready? May I have a yeah, show of hands or thumbs up that everybody is ready? Yeah, I think so. Okay, do we need to have a screenshot taken of this, guys? Yes, so we're gonna take okay, a so keep, group keep picture. Your, yeah. Keep your tile <laughs> in, in, in position before, uh, before your camera. Okay. Um, Simone, would you like to close it in just a bit more to the camera? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, keep it steady. 
Antonia, you as well? Or didn't you, did, did you not paint? Okay, got it, okay. Do we have the screenshot, gentlemen? Yeah, fantastic. A group picture. Okay. Mm. All right, so I hope everybody uh, enjoyed this, uh, this little workshop at home. Um, of course, this was done with the blue paint, uh, while the original pieces are painted with black. Now, if you ever come to Delft, feel free to send me a message and I'll be happy to show you around the whole museum. We just saw a little bit of it today. Uh, you can also take a look at the ac actual workshop and the factory where the people are working. Um, and you will see how, yeah, how the painters uh, do it with the black paint. But at least you got a, like a, a trial today. Um, but of course, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing everybody is really excited about the, the, the Christmas ornament. Mm -hmm. So I have um, the bowl here, and I think now is the moment to... Shall uh, I? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Can, yeah. Well, there we go. And all the names are in here, of course. Yeah, it is, it is really going to happen. Only okay, I have one piece yeah. of paper here in my hands. I'm going to unfold a piece of paper. <laughs> um, it's Barbara, PCMA, Canveen. Where's Barbara? Welcome. Congratulations. <laughs> we'll make sure this gets, uh, this gets uh, your way. Thank you. Um, yeah, I believe that we have come to the conclusion of uh, this masterclass which uh, I must say, uh, Antonia and Pinar, you did most of the work in preparation for this evening, or for us this evening, and for our North American friends uh, afternoon. Um, thank you for that. Uh, but most of all, thank you, um, our, our friends, our guests from, Nor from the United States and Canada for being with us this evening. We appreciate this very, very much. Also, a big thank you to my Dutch partners. Thank you for being with us uh, this evening. Um, we'll hope to do it again uh, anytime soon. Um, and have I forgotten anything? I look at Pinar, who is in the back in the production room. No, all fine. Then nothing remains than to thank you, Edo, for being our host this evening. It was a thank great you. pleasure. I hope to yeah. be here back once again. Yeah. And uh, well, thank you for your hospitality. All right, very welcome. Yeah. Okay. Hope you enjoyed. Well, hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> and um, if that's going to be all, then I will conclude for this evening. Have a great day. Stay safe and hope to see you for real anytime next year. Thank you. Delft, near The Hague and not far from Amsterdam, has traditionally been the city of great minds, of pioneering inventions, the city of lighting and innovation. Did you know that the microscope was once invented in Delft by Anthony von Leeuwenhoek, who was friends with the famous Dutch painter Johannes Vermeer? His whole life he was inspired by the Delft cityscapes and the inhabitants of Delft. And did you know that the most famous girl without a name is also from Delft? From this beautiful, colourful city, but also the city of blue. Delft Blue, the classic colour that links the bright history of Delft with the future. Welcome to Delft.